Last week, I went over my top five daily trainers of the year. Today, I'm gonna go over my top five speed shoes of 2020. With the year coming to a close, I'm ready to look at my top five favorite speed shoes of 2020. And I gotta be honest with you, it was a very difficult list to come down to because there are so many good entrants in this category. But even as that was, the top five that I settled upon had four brand new shoes for this year. And in other words, there wasn't like an iteration on a prior existing shoe. These were brand new shoes right out of the gate. And in their first year, they're already in my top five list for speed shoes. With those top five, there's also brand new foams that were introduced for the first time this year as well. So 2020 was definitely a year where the companies swung for the fences and it paid off big time because we had some fantastic shoes here. Shoes that we can certainly race in or do our faster training in. We've got a wide variety of shoes here too. We've got stack heights in the forefoot ranging from 16 millimeters to 27 millimeters and weights ranging from 7.2 ounces to 9.3 ounces. So quite a big variety of speed shoes depending on the kind that you're looking for. So let's go over them now. But before I do that, I wanna go over two things. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna go over disclosures. Four of the shoes here were purchased with my own money. One of them was provided to me for the purpose of review. I'll put links to everything down in the description down below and I'll put an asterisk by the one that was provided to me for the purpose of review. However, no one's paying me to make this video or to include their shoes on this list or to even use any of these shoes. And no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with those disclosures out of the way, let's go to the second thing that I wanna do. And that's kind of defined kind of the boundaries of what is a speed shoe. Now kind of, to define it by like a negative definition, it's not a daily trainer and it's not necessarily like your carbon plated racer. It's something right in the middle. The speed shoe is that shoe that you're gonna reach for for your longer workout day. Maybe you've got some tempo miles to put in or you've got some threshold repeats that you wanna put in. This is a shoe that's perfect for that task. Anything that can go from tempo pace or around marathon pace all the way up to mile repeat pace, that's something where these shoes tend to shine. And anything that's outside of that, like stuff that's gonna be like uh, easy days, super long run, recovery run days, these shoes might not be all that great for because they wanna go fast. A lot of people will probably use a lot of these shoes on this list for their half marathon or their next marathon. So that's kind of where the speed shoe comes in. It's a speed shoe, it's a high performing shoe, it might even be your race shoe. All right, now with that definition set down, let's talk about my five favorite speed shoes for this year in no particular order. First, let's start with the Hyperion Tempo. This is one of the new shoes this year and it's got brand new foam in it too. DNA Flash Midsole, a brand new midsole material from Brooks and it was a much needed jolt of energy that the Brooks brand needed. It's long been known as the very reliable, the very predictable, the very stable brand that moves a lot of units but maybe isn't the most exciting. That definitely changed this year with the Hyperion Tempo. It's got that just electric blue foam of a midsole. I, for some reason, I still just, when I look at it, I wanna eat it. That's really strange, I know that, but the material itself is just an absolute delight to run in. At those easy paces, your warm-up paces, you just feel like this is a little bit stiff. I'm not sure that I like this. 
But once you start pushing off and getting those paces quicker, that's when the foam really starts to come to life. It starts to really absorb everything that you're pushing into it and gives it back with a nice sense of horsepower to it. Nothing too jerky, nothing too abrupt. The shoe comes in at 7.2 ounces, making it the lightest shoe of the shoes that I'm gonna be talking about today. And it definitely feels like it's very light on foot. The upper is relatively minimal, but it's not quite like a racer minimal, but not also as robust as a daily trainer is going to be. So I feel like it did have a couple of issues with fit that I hope that they will address for version two, but otherwise it's just a fantastic shoe. Definitely one of my favorites overall for the year and very easy to put into this category. The next shoe that I want to talk about is the Boston Nine. Now this is the only shoe on this list that has some heritage behind it. This is the ninth iteration of this shoe. And perennially, it tends to be a shoe that I tend to underrate. This year, I'm definitely not making that mistake because this year it also has a new foam in it. It still has Boost. Boost isn't dead. I think Boost very much, when used correctly, like they're using it in the Boston Nine, can be a very useful foam to have from a long distance runner's perspective. But this year with that light strike, I just think that it's a nice combination of those two foams. Usually I'm not a huge fan of dual density foams or having like two kinds of foam within a shoe, like something in the heel, something in the forefoot, but they're really making it work with the Boston Nine. And there aren't a lot of changes that are happening in the upper of the Boston Nine compared to the Boston Eight. But I think what they've done is they made it feel a little bit more race tuned, a little bit more speedy in a good way. I don't think it's overly tight. I don't think it's too snug in the forefoot. It just feels a lot better for me in terms of the fit. It just took a good fitting shoe and made it even better for this year. This is actually a shoe because there's boost in the heel that I feel like someone like me, I can use it as a daily trainer. This shoe has 16 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot coming in at 8.4 ounces. So kind of like in the middle ground of weight, that's probably that boost that has something to do with it, but on the lower end in terms of feeling low to the ground. So definitely something that you should not be underrating this year. Even if you've done it before in other years like I have, don't overlook it this year go and check that one out. The next shoe that I'll talk about is another brand new shoe for the year. It's from Asics. It's the Evo Ride. Now they're using an existing foam, flight foam, but they're using it in a fantastic way with their guide rail system. It's a way that's supposed to help you rock and move with your foot strike in a little bit more of a fluid way to help keep that turnover moving quickly. And this does a fantastic job of it. When I first reviewed the shoe, I actually really didn't like it at slower paces. I didn't quite understand what the shoe was, but then once I figured out that this is a shoe for faster paces, that's when it really started to come to life for me. And once you get on your toes on the shoe, it really starts to sing. My first experience with flight foam, the midsole material that's in the shoe, was from several years ago in the Dynaflight 2. That shoe was great, had a lot of promise, some issues with the upper. And I was just like, once Asics can figure out they need to figure out this upper, they need to keep that midsole foam, and then kind of like just strip away all the other stuff that makes ASIC shoes heavy and a little bit clunky at times. Then they're gonna have a real winner on their hands. That's this shoe. That's This is the shoe that I've been looking for from ASICs for several years now. I absolutely love the Evo Ride. Again, one of my favorite shoes from the year overall and easily belongs in this top five. The fourth shoe that I'm gonna talk about today is another brand new shoe for this year and it has a brand new foam as well. It's the Endorphin Speed. Now this is unique, it's different from some of the other shoes that I've talked about already in that this shoe has a plate, it's a nylon plate and it's got Power Run PB foam in it which is a new foam that they have from Saucony. It looks like Boost, it kind of behaves like Boost but it's a lot lighter than Boost. I feel like it's out boosting Boost. It's just a fantastic material to run on. I love running in the Endorphin Speed. It has the right level of bounce. It's not too mushy. I'm getting a really nice level of spring to it. For me, my speeds that I'm running at, the amount of power that I'm pushing into the ground, it's giving it back to me. I feel like in a really nice kind of level of balance. It's as if they tuned the shoe specifically for me and the way I run. I absolutely love running in this shoe. I run everything from threshold repeats all the way up to a 30 mile race in this shoe and it handled everything fantastically. It's a shoe that you can take to the distance, but it's also a shoe that's very happy to downshift and hit that red line and let you pick up that pace. It's super fun to run in. I keep saying this, but again, this shoe is one of my favorite shoes of the year, but it also makes it to my top five speed shoes. 
All right, now let's talk about the last shoe that I'm gonna put on this list. And this might be a little bit controversial because while the Endorphin Speed had a nylon plate, it wasn't carbon. This shoe that I'm gonna talk about does have a carbon fiber plate in it, but I still think it fits in this Speed Shoe category. It's the Fuel Cell TC. I believe the TC stands for training and competition. So it definitely can be a shoe that you race in, but it's meant to be kind of like race day feel, but meant for training. It's from New Balance. It's got New Balance's fuel cell foam in it. And the way they're using it on this shoe, you've got tons of stack height, 27 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. And it's a 10 millimeter drop shoe. So you've got 37 millimeters of stack height in the heel getting really close to the upper bounds of what's even street legal for a road marathon. It's got that much foam in it. It's a definitely a nice, comfortable shoe, even for some of your easier paces. But that fuel cell foam, like a lot of the foams that are on this list, it really starts to come alive once you start picking up the pace. And it's got that carbon fiber plate in it to help give you that really strong sense of push off after your foot hits the ground. It's also got a much more comfortable upper than a lot of racing shoes would. So that's another thing that sets it apart from some of the racers that I'll be talking about in a couple of weeks. But for this shoe, all of that, the comfort in the upper, the amount of midsole foam and that carbon fiber plate comes at a little bit of a weight penalty. This shoe is the heaviest on the list coming in at 9.3 ounces. So not exactly a light shoe, but still when it comes to longer distance races, half marathon and the marathon, something that's not prohibitively heavy. And this shoe is just really fun to run. And it's, it's a strange shoe in the sense that like, I liked it the first time I ran in it. It felt really tall. I felt a little bit nervous taking some corners. But the more I started to run in it, the more this shoe just kind of really molded to my foot. And I felt like I really understood what it could do. And it, it was really understanding what I was doing somehow. I just felt like the shoe was starting to get me. I don't know. The more I run in it, the more it just seems to make sense. Even at 9.3 ounces, I don't even feel like I notice it anymore. I just feel like I'm wearing a really powerful shoe that's somehow still really comfortable as well. And so it's a really great shoe to run in. I think for a lot of people that are looking for a shoe that they could do their hard workouts in and race their marathon in, this is a shoe that you should certainly be considering. I know a lot of people are overlooking it because it has kind of like a big brother shoe, the RC Elite, but this TC Elite is no joke. It's definitely something that can handle the marathon paces and even your marathon training workout. So definitely deserves to be on this top five list. So among those top five, which is my favorite? I gotta, this is tough, it's really tough this year because all five of these shoes, I think in a lot of other years would be in the running for shoe of the year, they're so good. But this year I'm gonna give the top speed shoe crown to the Endorphin Speed. I just absolutely love it. From the moment I put it on, I knew this shoe was an absolute winner. The fit is great, the midsole feel is great, the power that you get from it is great. Again, it's just tuned from, I feel like, there might be other shoes that are out there, those carbon fiber plated racers, those other shoes that are made for pros. For someone who's a non-elite, just a regular guy that just likes running, this is pretty much your dream shoe. I'm not saying it wasn't close, but I don't have any reservations in giving the Endorphin Speed my title for top five speed shoe of the year. Now, before I go, I do wanna give you one bonus shoe because I always like to throw in a bonus whenever I do a top five. And the bonus shoe for this year is easily gonna be the SL20 from Adidas. Yeah! This shoe, I think that, again, in another year, the SL20 would have easily been in the top five speed shoe and could have even been the best speed shoe of the year. But this was just such a stacked feel this year. It was crazy. So the best place that I could fit it was in the bonus round and the SL20 easily picks that one up. It is a quirky shoe, brand new for this year all light strike in the midsole foam, but it's an incredibly snappy shoe to run in. I loved running fast in it. It wasn't so great at slower speeds, but when you're running fast, the midsole foam is fantastic. The outsole grip was nice and tacky. The upper was like a weird soccer boot though. It just was so strange, but somehow it worked as well. And for whatever reason, they had this fantastic shoe. They were deep discounting it almost right away. Then they would release new colors. And then those would get deep discounted right away too. And then they kind of went away for a while and you could only find them like on the other third party retailers. People are texting me images when they're finding them at Ross for like 30 bucks, 25 bucks. It's absolutely crazy. And then they just released more SL20s again at full price, but they're already eligible for like Cyber Monday discounts and holiday discounts. I don't know what Adidas is doing with this shoe. They keep making them and they keep discounting them like crazy, but 
just don't look a gift horse in the mouth and pick up a pair of these shoes because they're so fun to run in. I just love the SL20 and I wanted to give it some attention in this speed shoe video. So those are my thoughts on the top five plus a bonus speed shoes for this year. Let me know what you guys think about it. What were some of your favorites? There were so many good ones out there this year. There's a ton of different ways that I could have gone with this list, but those are my five and I'd love to hear yours too down in the comments down below. Or better yet, I do a live stream every day, 3 p.m. on YouTube Central Time. You can come by the live stream and tell me about your favorite shoes there. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?